Greetings, salam, welcome to Cliffy Land's Global Cooking Challenge as we learn to cook by cooking one country in alphabetical order, working through all 193 UN member states, one country a week, working our way from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. This is country and week number 177 of 193, as tonight we dine on the food of Tunisia. This is uh, the first of three nights, and tonight we'll be making a uh, chicken couscous. Uh, but first, we have to make the harissa paste, which is at the heart of uh, just about every Tunisian dish. Uh, in case you did not know or don't remember, Tunisia is located in the north of Africa, right on the Mediterranean. That's it right there. And... Ah, that's the side of my boiling water side. Crack into the other side of the room. Hopefully our lens is gonna stay on here. Um, I have a heap of chilies, dry chilies just sitting around because I've made chicken mole and such, so they keep coming up. Now, there's a whole thing about uh, harissa and the authentic Tunisian harissa having certain ingredients uh, which are harder to find on this side of the Atlantic. So uh, we're going with this harissa recipe I've used once before. I believe last time it was maybe for Jordan. Hola, Hector. How are you doing? Um, we are starting with eight dried guajillo chilies, which are these right here. Now, the different dried chilies will have different flavors, um, not necessarily all spicy. So these are guajillo chilies right here. So we're going with eight of those. One, a two. Three, four, how many is it now? One, two, three, four, five. Come on. Six. I just realized something. Seven and eight of these. So I'm working my way through these. Uh, when I make the mole, suddenly it's like 23 of these and 8 of those and 16 of the other and even though I have a million, I have to go out and buy more. Um, let me get a second or third bowls going here. There's a reason for this. Because uh, then we need New Mexico chilies, which are in here somewhere. I know I have them. I have uh, the japones in here also. These are the New Mexico chilies. Oh, golly gee, I think we're in that situation now again. One, yep, there I am. Two, who knew I wouldn't have enough. Two, three, four, five, six. So we got seven instead of eight, and they're not all the same size, so life's rough that way. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have to seed these uh, and stem them uh, before we move on to the next step, which is why I have the third bowl. So I'm put these suckers away. More room in the cabinets for clipping. Yay! I can get a centimeter more of stuff shoved in here. Okay, so we are going to seed and stem them before we go any further, which uh, is going to be weird. Uh, they're all going to land in one pot eventually. I don't think between six and seven of these New Mexico, since they're not all the same size, is going to matter too much. Uh, How is everybody Saturday? Doing okay? How are things in Cali? Ugh, I can't get the... Uh, okay, stop being lazy. Anything in there? Just a little. Okay. So what's going to happen, these are going to get soaked in boiling water, which is what that was about back there. Uh, and then they're going to be um, used in the next step. Uh, one can buy harissa paste, but decided... Um, I wanted to um, make my own fresh since I've had the recipe sitting here. And I did it before. I had a little glass jar to save it in, but then the little glass jar got exploded and broke apart in a million pieces. 
So, um, gotta shake, shake, shake. Get out. It's tricky when they're all in there like that. Okay. Usually I've um, gotten the seeds out after they've been soaked, but... There we go. Uh, Tunisia. So country 177 of 193. Working our way through. Interesting developments over here on the challenge. Uh, been working on plans for phase two and all sorts of other exciting aspects of this. So stay tuned, things could be interesting. Could be getting interesting before too long. Trying to expand to other platforms. And uh, what's the word I'm looking for, co-brand? So, uh, interesting stuff. Need to, um, so. Uh, and I ordered the uh, that bracket that I kept talking about so I could uh, live stream also on Periscope at the same time. Derek, thank you. So good seeing you. Uh, Ellie, is it? Uh, Ellie, yes, hello. Thank you for the like and the restream. Greetings. We are working on our first our harissa paste, uh, which is going to be an ingredient in the chicken couscous, which we will be making. I started a little bit early because... Um, a, I know I'm slow, and B, I have to make the harissa paste, which doesn't take an insane amount of time, but long enough that it's a pain. I say that's empty. So we're trying to get the seed and, seed and stem these uh, two different uh, peppers, the dried guajillo chilies and the dried New Mexico chilies. Uh, Derek, thank you for the like and the restream. Hello again. Yes. Uh, this goes this way. And it just so happens that I have these sitting around. Luckily, these chili peppers are easy to find for me um, as uh, just about half a mile away, there is a, uh, a Guatemalan community and a uh, attendant Latin market where they have all the dried um, chilies that you would find in, you know, Mexican, Central American cooking. Although, there are so many different markets around here um, that... Uh, Cater to the very, 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 very white neighborhood. That when I went to one, uh, last time I was looking for dried chilies, uh, not only did they not have the dried chilies they wanted to, they didn't know what dried chilies were. I explained to them, and it was like I was talking about, you know, unicorns. They didn't have any idea what it was talking about. They pointed me to, like, the spice aisle and said, oh, here, this has got pepper. There's pepper here. I'm like, no, a dried chili. Pe no, I don't know what that is. They have chili powders. Says, no, that's not what I need. So, fun times. So, it really depends where you live, is the uh, long and short of it. Oh, incidentally, last night, I uh, went to an Ethiopian restaurant <clears throat> down in West Palm Beach with some friends. Been dying for Ethiopian food. It's one of my favorites. When I lived in D.C., they were everywhere. Um in this one neighborhood and they expanded all over the city and uh, then we moved to Florida and there was not any, there wasn't a single one in the state of Florida. I went up making my own Ethiopian food and Eritrean food and later Somali food, which is sort of similar. Um, but uh, damn, they opened one, it was really good. So had a great meal last night. Okay, so we've got our dry chili peppers here and we have our boiling water, which uh, I guess still qualifies as boiling. So let's take a picture of you. Smile pretty. Okay, 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 okay. Not on me, don't splash on me. Not all over, just in the bowl. Okay, we're gonna try to submerge these. Mmm, I wish you could smell this. Wow. That's got, just the smell of that alone is fantastic. So uh, we're gonna let that sit for 20 minutes. So that's gonna sit here until six. Yeah, hot water in a hot metal bowl. Touching with the bare hands, real smart move, Clifford. Okay, so uh, while that does that, uh, we're going to uh, move to the stove. 
because we need to toast. Uh, didn't you eat Ethiopian Anna's Morning in D.C.? Yes, I did. So since we're talking about that, thank you, Hector. You were uh, smart, and either you have a good memory or you were there um, in one form or another. Uh, yes, yeah, so when I first moved to D.C., uh, many, 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 many years ago, I'm looking for a, I guess this is, where's the smallest saute pan? Did I lose it? Oh, it's over there. Um, I moved to D.C. and there's a neighborhood called Adams Morgan, uh, that he's just referring to there, which, uh, someone said, hey, let's go get some Ethiopian food, and I thought, uh, what is that? I didn't, you know, I, I didn't make that same stupid adolescent joke that people would make. And, um... And it was so freaking good, and uh, went back for it, and then when we moved away, in the interim I realized that all the Ethiopian foods, restaurants, mostly left this neighborhood and went to other neighborhoods, and other ones I lived in, and they're everywhere, and they're all really good, and there's none here, but now there's one. Yeah. So, we are going to heat up our uh, little saute pan over here, we're going to start toasting some spices uh, that I've already put out some of them here. Uh, we're starting with half a teaspoon. You know what? I should turn this off first. Uh, half a teaspoon of caraway seeds. So, uh, so obviously you've eaten. I'm guessing you've eaten at Adams, the, the Ethiopian restaurants in Adams Morgan. One I went to called the Red Sea, which was my favorite. Um, but they all, all the Ethiopian restaurants have just a very small number of names. Uh, no matter where you are. So this place is called Queen of Sheba, which is kind of what the one of the one in Louisville, Kentucky we went to was, and so forth. Uh, now we're adding uh, a quarter teaspoon of coriander seeds. Someone months ago here told me to keep my coriander seeds in the freezer, so that's where they have been this whole time. Seems weird to me, but one of y'all told me to do that, so that's what I done did. Okay. So we're going with a quarter teaspoon of these. Quarter teaspoon of these. But, you know, every time we've gone to Ethiopian restaurants of late, when we've gone to DC, I have in my mind, I want to have the Doro Wat, which is sort of the national dish. And that's what I made for, I believe it was for Ethiopia. And, uh, and it seems that every time I've gone, uh, people have said, oh, let's get a sampler platter, a little of everything, and I'm going, I don't get enough of the thing that I want. And that happened like two and three times in a row, so this time I got a whole big serving of the Dora Wat, all to myself. Love it. Yeah, it's very spicy, it uses a berbere, I believe that's how you pronounce it. maybe it's berber, I don't know. Uh, spicy spice mix, and I have some of that, uh, that I made it, made sort of like I'm making this harissa right now. Uh, so that's our coriander seeds. Let me put this back away. Then we're going to grab our cumin seeds, which we have sitting right here. And we're looking for a quarter teaspoon of those. Quarter, quarter, quarter teaspoon of cumin seeds. Right there. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to bump you. Didn't make you spill your drink. Uh, so that's caraway, coriander, and cumin over medium heat. And uh, we're going to uh, let that toast for about four minutes. Do stirring constantly. Shake, 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 shake. Four minutes. Four minutes. And then it's going to wind up in the spice grinder. So, uh, that's where it's going to be, along with some uh, one more ingredient, which is going to be coming up, dried mint. Uh, I, these, they're ancient, if I'm going to be honest with you. These are ancient dried mint leaves. I have fresh mint, which is dried out, um, in the fridge. But uh, I figured it asked for dried mint specifically, and these have been sitting there long enough that I want to get rid of them. So, dried mint. You know, when um, I was so dumb before this whole thing? Years ago, 
uh, I tried to have a party with uh, making uh, mojitos. I was going to make have a mojito party, and I looked up the recipe how to make mojitos, and I couldn't find fresh mint, and I thought I could use dried mint. Ha ha ha! That does not work. That was a bad move. That was a bad bad move. Um, so when I'm done with this whole paste thing, it's going to wind up in um, in this jar over here, but it's not really a, some of these plastic jars for rice. I hope that's going to be okay. It's supposed to be like a one pint jar. And this is plastic and not glass, so we're going to find out. Yes, we shall. Toasting our spices for another two minutes here. I can get out my spice grinder while I wait. It's already plugged in even. Imagine that. Well, you guys can, I can just move you. Oh, that's cumin. It's very strong smelling. Love it. Love it. How's your Saturday going? If it's still Saturday where you are. Unless it's Sunday where you are. Two more minutes. Just gotta go in here with, what is it again? Mint, yes, and then we're gonna drain the chilies. But the Ethiopian food was so good. I had the uh, injera bread. Oh, by the way, everything is on the blog at cliffyland.com. Find uh, the blog. You can see all the countries that you missed. Uh, videos to the ones from the meerkat era. Links uh, to the original recipes, videos, information about the countries reviews of how everything went, but you can see the Ethiopian Eritrea, that was the week we actually went and got married, um, in D.C. I came back with ingredients, I packed my uh, luggage full of uh, Ethiopian ingredients, I had flour in my suitcase. It was nice, uh, but the injera bread that the Ethiopians and Eritreans use, it's sort of like a fleshy, kind of like sourdough that you tear pieces off with and eat with your hands and and it's and the food sits on top of it as well and soaks up the juices uh, oh, oh so good but when I made it the first time um, the recipe I used for the Eritrean version taste was okay the color was interesting because it was brown I didn't realize there's a whole story behind uh, it traditionally being brown but um, for reasons involving availability and famine, um, many people have come up with, you know, alternate recipes to try to get the same flavor, which changes the color. So the one I had last night was brown. It's like, oh yeah, this is made with the real tough flour stuff. Good stuff. So uh, we got you all nice and toasty now, and we transfer you to the spice grinder. Let's... Here, we'll move you first. Mm -mm -mm. Don't put the paper in the water. Okay. Okay. So, spice grinder. Hello, who do we have here? Hello, greetings. Who do we have? One, two, three. Damad. Salam. Greetings. Uh, we are making our food, uh, our harissa, for Tunisia. I have a story about Tunisia, but... um. I want to save it for when there's a sizable audience, because I don't want to tell the story twice. It might be a little controversial, but we'll see how that works. So we have uh, added this into our spice grinder, and to this we're going to add... Uh, how much? How much? How much? How much? One teaspoon. One teaspoon of the dried mint. Mm -hmm. So, dried mint right here. With one teaspoon of you into there. Okay. In you go. And now we grind. Hello, Lydia. So good seeing you. How are you today? Not 
still SEC for that. So, Lavender Femchi, thank you for the restream. Uh, um, one moment, I still see that uh, there are pieces of uh, seed in there, so uh, I am, well, I put my stuff away. Okay, one more time. Oh my god, that smells so good. Holy cow. Look at that. Oh. Oh, it takes you to heaven. Oh my god, that is so good. Okay. So let's put that somewhere. Uh, uh, uh. We're gonna need all of these ramekins here. You, I know I could keep it in here. There you go. Oh my god, that is the greatest! I love these spice mixes, I'm just crazy about them. They smell so good. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, this is uh, needs to be the chilies need to soak in here for another seven minutes. Uh, am I right? I'm right. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, so meanwhile, let's, uh, move, move, move to the other side of the room. Because we're gonna have to get out the food processor. Uh, for the next bit. So while we wait for the chilies to finish soaking, uh, we're losing our blender and not putting it up on top of the refrigerator so it does not fall down and break into a million little pieces like it did before. And I'm separate, changing out the attachment on this food processor. Uh, from the grinding attachment to the pureeing one, thusly. Because if I start adding stuff into here, Okay. I don't know why I keep taking this on and off because I need to open it. Okay. So, uh, stuff is going to be going in here in a minute, uh, which is going to include uh, this uh, spices, powder, or mint. Okay, let me mark off where I am so I don't lose track. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get out some salt and. And our, oh, we're gonna need our olive oil as well. Uh, this guy uses a lot of olive oil, and apparently the key to the harissa is in its usage is that it needs to remain submerged in olive oil. So as you use more, uh, you want to um, keep replenishing the olive oil that's in the in the storage jar because it needs to be uh, by half an inch covered in the olive oil. I used this before for I don't know if it was Jordan. Uh, or Morocco, probably Morocco. Um, but I made it it's from the same recipe, it was really good. I kept it in the fridge and we kept using it for just anything, sandwiches, you name it. I would put this harissa on it until it was all used up. So I am not too worried about that. Um, still, uh, I can keep prepping while I wait because we need five cloves of garlic. And I think I'm out of this one. So let's see what's happened here. We've got any left in here? That doesn't sound too good. Hmm. These are itty bitty. I don't think those even count. I think this could be history. Okay, so I'm gonna count that as one. We're looking for five cloves of garlic. Uh, okay, we have our trash over here. Mm, five, that's, we're gonna count that as one, two, mm -mm. 
Okay. Three. Come back. Hmm. I'm gonna count that as four. These are small. Five. I like it good and garlicky anyway. So, uh, three more minutes to soak, so that'll give me just enough time to peel and crush these. Here, how are you doing? Uh, we've got people here on Saturday, yay. You know, we, there was a picnic. There was a picnic outside. Uh, it was not weather for a picnic. We thought for sure it was going to be canceled because it was like thunder and lightning. But no, there was still a picnic under a tent. It was an exciting picnic, but went to the grocery store to buy stuff. The power went out. That was fun. They were on the backup generator. So I had to, uh, shopping for my couscous, I had to use the, the flashlight on my phone to look on the aisles to buy my couscous because there was no lights in the aisle. It was all dark. Very strange. Shopping in the dark. Which got everyone talking about uh, hurricanes and stuff, which scares the bejesus out of me. I managed to dodge Florida hurricanes, my whole life in Florida, before and since. So, I'm hoping my luck holds out. Okay, come on. It's being difficult. Okay, meanwhile, Tunisia. What are you making, Ellie asks what I'm making. Okay, right now I'm making harissa paste, which is a spicy paste, a chili paste, which is used in just about any Tunisian uh, dish also in Moroccan, Algerian, ow, northern, uh, North African dishes. Uh, the dish dish that I'm making is a chicken couscous, which uh, is going to be made in an interesting way. Uh, you'll see the detail with the actual couscous that I chose. That to be a medium couscous, very specifically, not Israeli couscous, not, not nothing against the Israelis, but um, it's just the size of the grain is uh, small. Uh, as opposed to large, uh, which I figured out at the market. And uh, it's going to be a surprising amount of couscous, so I may have leftovers. Okay, so that is what we're making. Hi, what you making? I'm making soup. Oh yeah, looks like mud. Oh yeah, yeah. Nobody. Did anyone ever have to do that in, in middle school? It was called soup. It was like old play. It was like a in introduction to improv for you know grade schoolers. That was the entire the entire thing is that it'd be three people. Uh, so you take three people from your class and like one person would be the actor, the other person would be the other actor, the other person would be the director. And then the entire script was you know one person going saying hi what you making the other person saying say, I'm making soup. So says, oh yeah it looks like mud. Oh yeah yeah. And then someone else comes in and says I'm dying. Or I'm starving, whichever. And then the director says cut and tells them to do it a different way. So they do it. Make it like you're sick. Make it like you have a British accent. Make it like you're, you know, Western. Whatever. And that was, you know, and kids would have fun and merriment. So every time someone says, what you making? I always think of soup. Garlic. Okay. So now our time is up on the peppers and I need to wash my hands. Be right back. I need to wash this too. Ow. Be right back. Cloth. Be right back. One moment. One moment, please. Oh, I have a question for you all, too. But I will ask when I'm over there. Okay, so we have our chilies over here, and we have a bowl over there, and I'm going to drain these of the colander in one moment as I grab it. Uh, 
knife, colander. Colander. I'll be using that a few times this evening. So, okay, draining the chili peppers. Okay, drain the chili peppers, and once we've drained them, I should take this back. Still, obviously, there's some seeds left. In some, uh, some recipes or some things uh, call for saving this water and doing something with it. Not this one. And I made mole, it said to save the water. Now, obviously, there's still some seeds in there, but I'm gonna live with that. You there? No, okay. Um, I'll live with that. But meanwhile, uh, okay, so this is gonna wind up in here. Um, no, my hands are okay. So they're gonna go into the bowl here of the food processor. I know there's still some seeds, but it'll be okay. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so now they're in here. And then the drain, dump this out. Uh, then to that, I need to wash my hands again. I didn't have to take pictures, I wouldn't have to be washing my hands every 10 seconds. Just every 20 seconds. Okay, so once I've added these in there, uh, then we are going to add the dried spices, the spice mix we made. That's going to go into here. Yeah, nuts. Hold on. Mm -mm. Stand on my tippy toes. Okay. Dried spices, and to that we are adding three tablespoons of olive oil. Voila. Need more light in here. Ow. Sheesh. Okay. One. Two and three tablespoons of the olive oil. And to that we're adding one and a half teaspoons of salt. Uh, uh incident hey, who are we looking at here? Kilo gre greetings. Um teaspoon and a half of salt. So teaspoon, 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 teaspoon and a half of salt. So, uh, uh, uh. right hand, left hand, okay, salt going in, teaspoon, and a half coming up. What are we cooking today? We are, uh, right now, making a harissa paste, which is uh, a condiment, uh, which is used in uh, just about all your uh, Tunisian dishes. Uh, so we'll probably wind up using it tomorrow and Tuesday, which will be other two cooking nights of Tunisia. Uh, and then uh, the actual dish we will be preparing is a chicken couscous, a Tunisian chicken couscous, which is sort of like a national dish. Um, and to be very specific with the couscous that I purchased. And now we're adding the uh, garlic cloves into the uh, bowl here. Nope, nope, nope. And uh, one more thing, uh, we need to get me a lemon, which I bought, I bought a lemon, that is a lemon, no, that's an old mine, hold on, okay, big lemon. And a big lemon calls for a big lemon juicer. Like this. So uh, let's slice that open. 
and get squeezing. You there? No. Okay. So now you go here and squeeze. And I forgot to put it in the mic. You know, if you put the microwave for 10 seconds, um, you get more juice out of it. And I forgot to do that. Oops. Oopsie doopsie. Okay, lemon juice. And that's one half of one lemon. Uh, and the other half of the lemon going in here. I love this device. Before I got it, I was, you know, always fishing seeds out of everything. And I kind of dreaded having to deal with lemon at all because of that. But now it makes life easy. The proper tool. So, now that we've added that, a uh, nifty device it is. Um, and there's this right there, well, this one's from Sur La Table, but they, uh, the lemon one was hard to find. The lime one was, uh, I could find in the, in the grocery store, but this one I had to go to Sur La Table to pay the fancy prices. Okay, here we go. It's gonna get loud, so earplugs, mute button, you know, lower the volume, whatever. I'm gonna give you three, two, one. So, you can prepare yourself. This is going to be pureed, uh, and it's going to start and start and start and stop. So I'm going to need a spoon. Scrape down the sides. So, like I said, it's going to be loud. So puree on. Okay, in three, two, one, go. to the other side. Okay. Why am I switching to the other side? Because I have to take the stupid lid off. It says to scrape down the side, so that's what I'm gonna do. Scraping down the sides. I'm assuming you was thinking I was doing a blender or something, I don't know. But it is a, a nice little paste here. Okay, one more shot. In three, two, one, go. still see pieces I'm going to sneeze floating around in there yes I definitely <laughs> oh my goodness and this has quite the odor okay scraping down the sides um one more shot. I mean, it's it's doing well. I just want a little more unified. Oh, wow, that smell. That is something else. Wow. Yeah, I really should have um, a streaming smell thing. That would be a blessing and a curse. Three, two, one... as good as it's going to get. Ow. Mmm. Pasty. Mmm. Okay, so what we're going to tell you what next we're going to, like I said, I don't have the glass jar because the glass jar done broke. So I have this uh, old rice container. So that's going to go in here. Might as well scrape it with the same spoon. Okay, so in you go. 
This seems like it's too big. But I don't have anything else that's the appropriate size. No. I washed this out thoroughly. Like really, really, really thoroughly earlier. It's supposed to be, it said like a one liter glass sterilized jar. And it says it lasts up to three months uh, refrigerated. So, uh, I don't think it's gonna last that long. I mean, I think I'll wind up using it before then is what I mean. And if I don't, it goes away. Sean, Sean Saad, Sai, uh, greetings, salam, uh, Yusra, greetings. Uh, we are making our harissa, harissa paste right now. We're going to use it in our uh, chicken couscous, which we're cooking next in moments. Uh, here, live from Jupiter, Florida, home of a lighthouse in Burt Reynolds. We are working our way around the world, cooking one country a week in alphabetical order from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. This is week and country number 177 of 193. And if you are from the UK, uh, I regret to inform you that all the nations in the UK will be as one uh, as the UK is one UN member state. I will be doing different nights for... Uh, England and Scotland and the poor Welsh and Northern Ireland will have to join together for one night. We will be able to more accurately assess things in phase two after phase one is over. And that is that what we have there. Flatten it out and then we're going to be looking for to add about a half an inch of the boy, I still want to get as much of it out of here as I as I can. I will of the olive oil to this, so that's going to be thusly. Uh, I want half an inch, and of course, Cliffy is not really sure how much half an inch is. That seems like half an inch. Okay. So I've covered with half an inch of the olive oil. So now it looks like that. And now we're gonna cover this up and refrigerate it until later. And then as you use it, like I said, you need to um, keep replenishing the, it should be a sealed glass jar and I don't have that, I apologize. So. Uh, goes in the fridge for now, and that takes care of step one of our dish, and it is 6.16. So maybe we're doing okay on time, I'm not too sure. Uh, but now I need to do some prep work. However, I have a mess, but I'm gonna have to use this at some point. I am sure of it. I am sure of it. I am sure of it, but uh, we'll deal with that later. Okay, because we have other stuff to prep. Uh, so we are going to be doing the ever popular chopping of an onion, which I know is so exciting to watch. But you know, things happen. It's kind of how it works around here. Okay, onion, we're looking for two onions, which are gonna land in a bowl. Over here, we're looking for two onions. I have three onions left, which leaves me with one, one onion arithmetic. Okay. Ta-da! Okay, so anybody, any questions? Onion time is Cliffy, Cliffy story time. If you've, if you've been playing along, you know that when it comes time to chop onions, ask me a question, I'll tell you a story. How do we got people? Got 28 people here? 
Okay, well, we have among them are some of our favorite people, so I'll tell my story now. I, I, I just don't want, I'm, I'm probably going to wind up having to tell the story again um, the next two nights, which I don't like repeating myself, but I don't see how I can not, because I'm chopping an onion, and that's when story time happens. Damn it, this is... Onion is not seen its best days. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Once upon a time, uh, about before the uh, Arab Spring, if you know it's about Tunisia, that uh, when the Arab Spring thing happened, which has not turned out too great for a lot of countries, um, but Tunisia is one of the places it started, and uh, and they are, you know, in a pretty decent, you know, they're, they're the one place that it managed to sort of succeed, uh, insofar as these things do. Um, but uh, I, I give that as a preface, um, because uh, this was before. Before all of that. There's a reason I say that. Uh, because I was working in a certain place, uh, which shall remain nameless. However, I showed up to work one day, and I was told uh, that... Uh, I, I, there was some like security type person, you know, up front, who was uh, before anything opened, uh, who was giving me the stink eye when I walked in, and I thought that was really weird. So I said to my boss, "What's the deal?" And he said, "Oh, don't worry, the president is coming." And I kind of freaked out, thinking, "What? No, what? No, no, the president is coming here. Is that Secret Service? Yes, it was Secret Service." And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. And then he laughed. He said, no, 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 of Tunisia. And then I said, whoa, hold the phone. Really? The president of Tunisia is coming here? And he said, yes. And I said, you don't even know where that is, do you? To my boss. And my boss said, no, he had no idea where it was. In fact, he was getting confused with like three other places. And I said, that's it. You don't get to talk to him. I get to talk to him. Um, I know where it is. I know about the country. I'll, I'm going to be in charge here. So I stand up front as the Secret Service people are like shooing everyone away who's coming, you know, anywhere close. And finally the big limousine pulls up and out emerges the man and his, you know, assistant. Um, and the two of them are speaking mostly in French. And I understand a good deal of French. And this is not a happy onion. This is not a happy onion. I'm losing a lot of this onion here. No. Okay, we'll use the rest. Anyway, uh, greetings. Thank you for the restream. Uh, Zico. Salam. Uh, so, out comes the man. is the president of, you know, now, you know, former dictator of uh, Tunisia steps out of the vehicle and there's the assistant and I'm greeting him and so on and so forth and I'm showing it's my job to show him around so I'm showing them around and I'm understanding a great deal of the French that they're talking back and forth and uh, and then after you know an hour or so of showing the man around you know they leave and I'm thinking wow that's crazy I've just been spending you know chatting with this you know president of Tunisia that's the weirdest thing and then, uh, so after I'm kind of recovering from this and telling everyone who's showing up later the story, uh, later on the assistant comes back for, you know, to pick up what the, uh, the president had wanted. And he says, you, you're a very nice man, you. Yes, the president was very impressed with you. He would like you to, he would like to pay for you to come to Tunisia. And you stay in the in the big palace next to the big building next to the palace, and he will pay for you to come and stay, and you can talk to everyone, and um, you know, and in the staff, and and in the presidential palace, and so forth. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that would be insane. Uh, of course, I was kind of freaking out at the idea, and then I had to contact the corporate offices, and they said, no, we cannot let you do that. So I could have gone to be the special guest of the then dictator president of Tunisia, uh, but then I didn't. And then he got deposed, and then I'm looking at the news going, oh my god, I waited on that guy. That's crazy. 
So that's my Tunisia story. I hope you enjoyed it. Now my eyes are all getting watery. We're slicing, not dicing, the onions here. Ay, Dios mío, comiso. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, 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 uh. Lots of stuff happening in Tunisia. I just saw in the news just today. They're doing okay, but you know, there's issues. Uh, it's a complicated world in which we live. This is not sliced enough. Okay. So, has anyone been? Does anyone have a personal experience of Tunisia? I know there's even cruise ships that uh, tend to go to Tunis, and I think they still do. Oh, and of course you have the whole Star Wars fans going there, because Tatooine from uh, Star Wars is in, uh, in Tunisia. In case you didn't already know that, which maybe you already did. Uh, but uh, my global traveling friend, uh, with whom I may be having a joint venture soon, uh, went and did the pilgrimage when he was in Tunisia on his round the world without flying mission. So, we have our sliced onions, ta-da, and now we're going to uh, peel and slice two garlic cloves. So two more garlic cloves for Flavie. Two more garlic cloves. All by myself. So lonesome. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, I never got to Tunisia myself. Closest I came was Rome. Two garlic cloves. That's too small. That's better. Okay. Get back in there. All by myself. Uh, incidentally, once more, everything is at the blog at cliffyland.com. Pictures, links to the original recipes, and you can follow along uh, with the blogs, which are posted every Wednesday which will have all the information from all, in this case, three nights of cooking a particular country, in this case, Tunisia. You can follow on Facebook, uh, just look for Cliffy Land, on Twitter, at Cliffy Land, just like on the shirt, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and now on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way, if you are seeing this in the future, you can um, avoid all of this part and just go right to the part where I'm making the dish. So, which is obviously more exciting. But that's coming soon. There's going to be an interesting uh, preparation steps on this uh, dish, which uh, you'll see in a minute. Uh, we are scoring, uh, finally chopping these. Okay. Good times. I don't normally do anything on Saturday night, as you may normally do stuff on Friday nights, but last night was the uh, only night that our friends could go who wanted to go uh, to the Ethiopian restaurant. So there you have it. I'm cooking on Saturday and Sunday, today and tomorrow, and Tuesday, of course. Tuesday, every Tuesday we cook uh, without fail, if I can at all get out of any other Tuesday thing. And of course, there's only a few left. This is our very last North African uh, dining experience here on the uh, phase one of the challenge anyway. Well, after this, we only have three more African countries at all before the end. And two of them are the last two. So, uh, uh, Africa, 54 countries. More countries in Africa than any other continent. And we've done 50 of them already. So, only four left, this being one of them. This will be the 51st African country that we've done. Tunisia. A Night in Tunisia by Thelonious Monk. It's an old joke. Uh, when uh, Bill Clinton was on uh, campaigning for president in 1992, 
he went on MTV and he was interviewed by uh, the the MTV news woman Tabitha Soren but the gag was that she was just you know this kid who didn't know anything so he played a saxophone and so the gag was uh, they asked him who his favorite jazz musician was and then uh, she turns around and says who's the loneliest monk I mean, Thelonious Monk, see, Night in Tunisia. There's a connection. There's a method to my madness. I know I'm talking to myself. No one's listening. Um, okay, garlic. Uh, be, 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 be. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with these chilies? I'm not sure. It says optional. Optional. You can use two green chilies. It did not say what kind of green chilies. Uh, so, uh, am I missing someone? Did I say hello? Uh, Tanny, greetings, hello. How are you doing? We are cooking our uh, chicken couscous. We're prepping our chicken couscous. And right now I uh, bought two Serrano chilies. I bought three. I'm thinking I'm gonna use two. Um, sure, coffee, um, listening to your Tanisha store. I'm um, sure, coffee, I'm um, listening to your Tanisha store. Oh, oh, something about coffee and you're listening to the Tanisha story. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lavender Finchie. Okay. And, uh, now, uh, these are hot. Let me wash them. They're spicy, but every time, sometimes it's I'm gonna put them in whole. And I'll get some of the spice out of them, so I'm gonna risky move here and score them. I'm not gonna seed them, and I'm gonna put them in the dish whole uh, because we like spicy food around here. Oh, there's a story in Tunisian cooking. Uh, which I'll tell you in one second, as soon as I turn that light on. This is getting dark. Ah, the story in Tunisian, about chilies. The story in Tunisian cooking is a man can tell uh, if his wife loves him by how spicy the food is. Because if it's cooking for him, she's cooking for him at home, if it's not spicy enough, she doesn't love him because people like their food spicy. But when they're cooking for guests, you tone down the spice because you don't know how much they can handle. So if it's too spicy for their guests, she doesn't love them either. So that's, that's the parable of Tunisian cooking and spice. I said as you slice chilies. Watching, be right back. Almost there. Not too much more. I promise. Uh. So. Do, 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 do. Now people aren't hitting the town Saturday night? Oh, going to the club? No? Okay. So, next. Oh boy, this is what I was afraid of. Uh, I need to clear out that food processor because we're going to need it again. I'm pretty sure. You know what? I'm gonna use the blender. So that to avoid having to clean that out just yet. Uh, because here's the thing, I need to get together, um, there's a word the British use that uh, we don't, that apparently means tomato puree and comes in cans. Uh, it may have some extra ingredient, I am not sure. But I need to get together about uh, one and a third cups of what would be tomato puree. So I'm going to get me some tomatoes and puree them. And I hope it winds up being the right amount. Uh, that is, uh, we're looking for what, 300 milliliters plus? So somewhere between here and here. Okay, we're going to see how this goes. I'm still trying to get through my taxes. Oy, good luck with that. That's always fun. Taxes can't be, it's so much fun. You know what?
Yeah, I just got, I just, just came back from buying these tomatoes. Just now, and already it seems all soft. And I tried to make sure to, well, I guess it didn't matter since I was just buying them. I said, I'm cooking them right now. So how bad can it be? He said, famous last words. Okay, washing these off. Gonna take the tops off and then we're gonna stick them in the blender to make our tomato puree. Nyeh! <coughs> Caray, esta cosa. One moment, stupid stickers. Uh, I was also trying to find stuff for uh, the next few nights and not being too successful. Damn, sticker. Hold on. Forgot which one I already cleaned. And there's another sticker. Poopy. I told you there was a guy on uh, Top Chef who was uh, grinding up his uh, tomatoes, stickers and all, which was, and they were closing, doing close up on the stickers as they went through the grinder. Uh, I don't want to serve people paper. So, no. Okay, no sticker, no sticker, no sticker. Big money, big money. Okay. Go away. Okay, so we're going to start with number one. <coughs> okay. And there's a damn sticker. I hate you. I hate you so much. Durr. Stupid sticker. Okay, now. Okay, taking the Lucas the lid off here. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and stick all three of them into here. One. Because then I need to save them for anything else, too. There's either going to be too much or not enough. It's kind of how it works. Okay, are we ready? Mute button ready. Three, two, one. Here, buds, go. I, I should have put them in the other way around. Put it in face down instead of face up. Well, we'll see what happens. We're gonna see what happens. Okay. Upside down. Okay, three, two, one, go. Sima, greetings. This is uh, me making a mess of things. Okay. Uh, I thought putting it in a hole would work. That was wrong. Oh my goodness. It did not chop enough. Yes, yes. Lots to do. Okay. Okay, smaller pieces. Maybe that'll work better. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, back in. Three, two, one. clean out the food processor thing because I think I should be using that instead. I was trying to avoid doing that but I don't think I have a choice. Does 
not want to puree. It just doesn't want to get deep enough. So I'm going to have to switch, which I didn't want to have to do, but I'm going to have to. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Be right back. That's good. Okay. Do you need these parts here too? Yeah, I will. You. you and you. Okay. Attempt number two. To get tomato puree. I could have bought in a can, bought it in a can, but the can was too big. So we're gonna see what happens here. <coughs> Okay. Now I've made a bigger mess. Okay. okay. In three, two, one. Go. Now we have tomato puree. Almost. Sorry, one more shot. Still not done. I apologize. Three, two, one. Okay, let's go. That's good it's gonna get. That's as good as it's gonna get. Uh, I need a bowl, bowl, bowl. How about you? Okay. We're looking for uh, less than two cups, so it's kind of about as much as we need. Uh, the rest can go. So. Coming through. Is that fresh? Yeah. Okay. Cleaning out. Okay, so now we have our tomato puree and made a giant mess of the universe. Right there. So, uh, now we just set aside a couple things. going with uh, frozen peas because uh, I have them and it said you could use them. I know it's not the greatest thing in the world, but you know, it is what it is. So going with a cup of frozen peas, very frozen peas. Pea peas. So I'm gonna cup of frozen peas that are not unfrozen. They are frozen. I say that's a cup. I dub the one cup of frozen peas. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to have to peel and cup three tomatoes. <coughs> Not tomatoes, potatoes. You say tomato and I say potato. Is that potatoes? Yes. Above your head. Ah. There are potatoes above your head. Yes, I know you used the, the, the potatoes we had before yes. they went. Before. Throughout the rest. Yes, because they were getting gross. Old. I hate buying with potatoes in a bag. It's so aggravating. You got like one good one, the rest are old. I just hate having to go to these other markets where you can only place you can get them. Okay, so we've got our potatoes. These are white potatoes. Ooh, we're going to have to wash these. So uh, I'm going to be over there for just a second while I wash these.
Got our three medium white potatoes right here. We're gonna peel and chop them and then keep them in some water uh, so they don't get brown. That's where they're gonna land. This is where they're gonna start and this is the part where we peel. Peel the taters. Uh, oh, Derek, if you're there, um, I saw you had a stream the other day, and I was just about to watch it, because I was really eager to see your stream, but then I didn't have, you know, it was a very awkward moment. I couldn't, you know, watch it that time. So uh, I apologize. I am very looking forward to seeing another one of your streams. Because I've not seen your streams yet. I did not, I did not know you streamed. I know you watched. I did not know you streamed. I apologize for that. White potato. Had choices of potatoes. A white one is what I went with. Surprising how, how limited one's options are in even the fanciest stores around here. Um, I mean, you get the big russet potatoes for baking, and they're like as big as your head. I mean, otherwise, you've got to get them in a bag, and some of them might be really old, and that sucks. Eek! Well, we'll chop you in a minute. I'm not the world's best potato peeler, obviously. I'm not Army veteran. I had to do KP duty and peel potatoes. At least that's what TV taught me. Speaking of TV, anyone watch any good shows lately? Uh, we are very excited about The Americans back. Great, great show. Very tense drama about 80s in the US. Uh, fictional a uh, Russian couple who are deeply embedded in the U.S. and posing as Americans with kids, but they're actually Soviet spies. Uh, and it's a very exciting show. Very good. It should be getting all these Emmys, but it never does, which is... All the critics are all like, why, why? It's so good. It should be winning every prize. So if you're not watching it, and you have the ability to, and you like that kind of thing, check out The Americans on FX or FX Now. Or maybe on Netflix now, for the earlier seasons. That's Cliffy's recommendation of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay, all alone. Okay, meanwhile, uh, we are doing what? We are chopping uh, this into uh, four pieces. Each one. So, yeah, don't slice your hand. Slicing your hand is a bad move. Okay. These seem like awful big pieces of potato. It'll be okay. Who said what? What are we making? Hey, nymph music? Uh, right now, uh, after we've made our harissa paste, which is the condiment that goes into this, we are making uh, a chicken couscous, uh, one of the national dishes of Thai, uh, of Tunisia, which is country number 177 on our 193 week round the world alphabetical learn to cook challenge. Week and country number 173 of 193. So we have prepped our potatoes there and now I just need to set aside some things yay okay um, in fact I can even do that on the other side of the room so it'll be easier because it's kind of crowded over here right now 
because we have our various ingredients. Uh, when we do the live stream on Periscope, uh, which is going to be starting in a few weeks, um, you're going to be able to see the bird's eye view of uh, the prep, which is more interesting than just, you know, prep it, me babbling. Did you check out the food from Austria that I sent you? From Austria. Uh, Matthias, uh, I probably did. That's been a little while. Um, uh, like I said, I cooked Austria back uh, in A. I did the Wiener Schnitzel and the Spetzel, and it was very good. That was one of the best early dishes that I made. Uh, I believe, I know you sent me stuff and I looked at it, um, but it's been a while, so it's not like in the front of my head right now. Uh, but it was, uh, it looked very good. Um, I'll have to look at it again. I think I must have saved it. Um, for future reference because as we go back around uh, after we hit uh, Zimbabwe and then do these various uh, territories and other uh, you know sovereign states slash disputed lands um, we'll start back over with A and uh, Afghanistan and Austria is number 10 so uh, there'll be 10 weeks after we start over again we'll get to Austria again and we'll be doing only one night of any given country, uh, but uh, worry not, there'll be more options for uh, me getting to a particular cuisine to which you may be attached or fond, uh, of which you may be fond. Okay, cayenne pepper. We're looking for cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Boy, we go through a lot of cayenne pepper. Now what are we making? We are making uh, a chicken couscous. Uh, one of the national dishes of Thailand. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Thailand. God, I keep doing that. Tunisia, Tunisia, Tunisia. Tunisia, Tunisia. Uh, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. One teaspoon of cayenne pepper coming right up. Oh boy, I hope we have. I know I must have more. I know we have more. Yes, we do, because we go through a lot of cayenne pepper here. Love cayenne. Well, you're in the right place. Because uh, Tunisia, you're gonna have hot food. Hot food. We uh, our harissa paste, which you're gonna see in a moment. It's been sitting in the fridge since I made it just minutes ago. Uh, has not cayenne, but other not hot chili peppers in it. But it's gonna have this all this cayenne pepper, which is the end of the cayenne. Say goodbye to this one. Yes, it is very tasty, uh, and should be quite good. So cayenne go in there. Uh, meanwhile, after cayenne, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, ground black pepper. Ground black pepper. Say that ten times fast. Ground black. Ground black pepper. Ground black pepper. Ground black pepper. Blah, 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 blah. I love hot food. I now love hot food. As I said before, I'm not genetically uh, attuned to hot food, but after I cooked the food of Bhutan, now I love hot food. In fact, when I make stuff, black pepper. The barbecue and ketchup pizza with chili. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're looking for uh, the USA food there, Matthias. Uh, although, oddly enough, here in the U.S., it varies. A lot. Since so many people are, I mean, you're European, right? As I, if I recall, you're, Aus you're Austrian, or you're... I think you are. Uh, if I, I mean, you were giving me Austrian food. Um, but uh, here, people don't, you know, don't universally like spicy food. In fact, some people are like, very, no, I can't have anything with any spice at all. Which is kind of how I was growing up. And now I'm not. We're looking for half a teaspoon of salt here, and then we're going with cumin. Uh, thank you for the retreat who we're looking at here so much. Thank you for the restream. Beep, 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 beep. Sophie. Uh, blah, 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 salt, turmeric. We're looking for turmeric. Turmeric, turmeric. We go through so much of that too. So we're looking for how much turmeric? We're looking for one teaspoon of turmeric. Turmeric, turmeric. Uh, I never really know exactly how to pronounce it. 
I was always saying turmeric, and then I was realizing I was at least spelling it wrong. Uh, yes, Austria, Europe, yes, yes. Uh, I never got to Austria physically. I got to Switzerland, and uh, I was hoping we were going to go to Austria, and maybe was it Luxembourg or Liechtenstein? Um, but then we turned and went a different way, and then wound up going down to Italy. Um, and I miss seeing Austria. Ooh. I hear it's absolutely beautiful. And it keeps getting on more and more lists of places you should check out that maybe you had not considered. See, uh, Amadeus. Amadeus, Amadeus. Oh, 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 Amadeus. Rock me, Amadeus. Um, cumin, 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 cumin. We're looking for one teaspoon of cumin. Cumin. And here is my cumin right here. Uh, let me clean this out. We have got a lot of cumin happening in here. Uh, looks good. Have to go. Good day. Uh, Matthias, you have a good day, too. Thank you for coming by. So, one teaspoon of this very fragrant cumin, which gives you a very Mediterranean, Arabian kind of flavor to things. I'm used to it in Puerto Rican Spanish food. Uh, and uh, coriander. So we're getting a... Are we done with these? Uh, ground coriander in this case. And we're looking for one teaspoon of that. One teaspoon. Coriander. Which is cilantro. It's the same plant. Uh, the seeds of the plant or coriander or coriander seeds. Uh, the stems and leaves are called coriander in uh, England and such, but called cilantro here in the US and other places, I'm guessing. Uh, okay, and last but not least, in terms of measuring stuff out, I am going all metric, because this is a, uh, a British, a recipe of British origin. Uh, so I got me the couscous. I got the, uh, thank you for the Restream Matthias, uh, for 500 grams of this couscous. And it is medium couscous, not uh, pearl couscous or Israeli couscous, which is uh, larger. This is the uh, smaller, um, regular couscous, original couscous. And I am hoping I'm not going to dump it all over myself here. This is a fresh box. Hey, Clifton, how are you doing? Greetings to you. You are my good man. So we're going to weigh. We're going to weigh the sucker. Because uh, we're looking for 500 grams of it. Oh, brother. We've made a fine mess here, haven't we? Okay. Uh, I need to get this out of the way. I'm really sorry. Um, this is just a little too messy for me. I'm going to be right back. done with my knife for now. For now. For now. Eh. And... Sorry, it's got tomato cook everywhere. It is almost 7 o'clock. I, I hope I am not insanely late. Thankfully, it is Saturday, so it's not a school night, uh, so we are okay. Uh, Harzikia, I believe, no? I'm, I'm, I'm mangling that, I'm sure. Uh, Nikia, greetings, hello. I hope I got that right. How are you doing? Greetings, thank you for the like. Uh, I am looking to weigh my couscous, and I need 500 grams. We're going metric in this instance. And uh, from what I gather, that's about uh, no, zero, 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 zero. And now we're going to grams, ounces, ounces, grams. Okay, so we're looking for 500. Let's find out how much is that. Oh, please don't overflow the bowl. Please don't overflow the bowl. It's going to overflow the bowl. That sucks. Sucks. 
too much. Oh my god. That's more than this is gonna hold. Shoot. Okay, we're gonna have to try that again. With the only bowl I have that's free that's this size. So, starting over. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, looking for 500. Big money, big money, big money. 405. Almost. Bingo. Just over. OCD strikes again. Because it has to be exactly 500 or you'll die. So, uh, here's our, pro, our uh, original couscous, which we have measured out with an inch of our lives. Uh, hi, waking, is it... Uh, Haiwa Hiwa, greetings, hello, salam, hello everybody. Uh, we are cooking the um, chicken couscous of uh, Tunisia. And uh, have I finished with all the nonsense that I need? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we are. We're, it's time to move. We can finally start cooking. Yay! And we're going to need, um, this can be clean, but we're going to need a special thing. And uh, I'm a little worried about it, a little bit, because uh, I'm sort of rigging this together to see how it goes. And uh, for this, I'm going to need the big old saucepan, like that. And I'm going to need my bamboo steamer, because that sits right on top like that. Hey, do we have your... Uh, Rebecca, greetings, hello, how are you doing? Um, so we're making our chicken couscous. We're going to start off by heating up uh, some oil in the saucepan. And we're going to get us some olive oil, which I put down over here. Ah, gotta get my camera. And we're looking for, I'm going to say about two tablespoons. One, two tablespoons of olive oil. It is seven o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, so heating up the olive oil, and then I am already hungry. Uh, let me get my pen to mark off where I am again. Okay, we are here. Okay, we're going to eat our onions and garlic. I'm going to point you so you can see, but give me a second. Uh, Jason... Or Jasim, Kurdish. Ah, greeting, salam. We are cooking the food of Tunisia. This is a chicken couscous. Uh, let me try to find some room for you here. Uh, I'm running out of space for this to go. I'm I'm planning on phase two having uh, you. Uh, yeah, you're hungry because you're fat. Well, you are just a lovely, lovely person. Greetings to you, and you have the most loveliest of days. Bye-bye. Anywho, uh, we are moving on. We're heating up this. Let me get a little closer so you don't die. Who's hungry? Who's hungry? Hi, waking. You're hungry. Thank you. Hi, wa. Well, we're... Uh, I'm going to be eating here uh, once this is cooked, uh, so I need to heat this up with the olive oil and the onions, I said the, the olive oil, the onions, and the garlic. So here is the million and one, billion and first picture of me dropping olive oil or onions into a pot of oil, because I don't have enough pictures of that, and the garlic. These are the sliced onions and the diced garlic that are going in here. And in you go. And ta-da. So that is going to saute until it's almost softened, which is going to be about two minutes. And these are just sliced onions. Not, not diced, but sliced. There's going to be a lot of water that's going to be coming in. 
Uh, in fact, kind of a ridiculous amount of water, which uh, is going to be confusing. But uh, there's a reason for it. There is a reason for it. So going for about two minutes, just just slightly soften the onions and garlic. Once we do that, uh, whoopsie doopsie, um, I need to add a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so let me start getting that over here. Anthony Gilmore, hey, greetings. Thank you for the restream. Uh, we have our this, we have our couscous. Uh, let me get everything over in this general vicinity. I don't have to go too far. I need to get out my harissa paste, which I just made, and my chicken thighs, which I just bought. And I need to get a colander ready uh, for the water. Uh, Trisha, thank you for the restream. Slightly softening these in the olive oil there. I need to get my little other colander, baby colander, for the potatoes. Okay. Hello, Anthony, how are you doing? How are things? You missed it when I used the Worcestershire sauce the other day and I couldn't pronounce it. When I was making um, whatever last week uh, for Trinidad and Tobago, I was making the... Oh no, because that was in the uh, the night before. I made the marinade that I made the night before off camera and that involved the Worcestershire sauce. And I was I thought of you. Worcest Worcestershire. My Puerto Rican mouth can't get my lips around that. Okay, we're adding a teaspoon of the tomato puree, which is sitting over here. So, getting that out without trying to get it all over everything. So, tomato puree, one teaspoon. That seems like very, very little tomato puree. And then, moving that out of the way, in rapid succession, we're going to be adding the cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper, all of you, not some of you. Yeah, very careful the spices don't burn. So, uh, cayenne pepper, uh, the black pepper, uh, the salt, the turmeric, Uh, the cumin and the coriander in and let's mix that up I've turned the heat down some uh, good to hear it Anthony and now we're adding two uh, teaspoons of this harissa paste that we made. Is it tea teaspoons or tablespoons? Teaspoons. Two teaspoons of the harissa paste. Hold on. Okay, we're going one teaspoon. Oh my god, if I had a helmet cam, this would make life so much easier. Okay, one teaspoon. Come focus, 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 damn it. One teaspoon and two teaspoons of the harissa paste. And we have to coat the onions in this whole mess. Uh, me too, says Mario. I hope it's Mario. It is Mario. Mario Suarez? Buenas! Uh, we are cooking the food of Tunisia. I can put my harissa back away and we're going to add in the chicken thighs. 
which are sitting over here now. I could have got bone in. I wound up with boneless, skinless chicken thighs because um, that was what offered to me and we figured it was easier to live with than otherwise. Tell me he didn't put a knot in that. Okay, good. That way I don't have to get my hands in raw chicken. Okay. In go the chicken thighs. Wash my hands again just in case. Okay, chicken thighs picture. Okay, and now we're going to make sure everything is completely coated in this. And we're going to cook it for about two minutes. Like this. Uh, Mario, ah, you're from Brazil. Uh, I know obrigado, I forgot how to say hello. But greetings. Mi, mi español sale un poquito con lo portugués, pero portugués no... El español no, 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 me, no, me, no me funciona tanto. Perdón. Uh, do you know Feijo? Uh, yes, I do. I made it for Brazil. Everything is at clickyland.com, by the way. You can see how I did on Brazil. Brazil was now, to explain again, um, this is me learning to cook. When I started this four years ago, I could barely boil water. Um, now we're four years in, and I'm on country 177. So Brazil was country number uh, somewhere like um, uh, like 25, somewhere in there. And uh, I tried to do the feijada, feijada, um, and it was okay until the last minute, and I totally screwed it up because I started cutting the meat and it's getting cold, and so I can't wait to try it again. I will do much better next time. Uh, Emily! Hello! Thank you for the like and the restream. Yes, I really, I feel so bad that I did not do a good enough job on that Brazilian dish because I was very excited about it. But I've done many other dishes that are similar to dishes had in Brazil that are other Portuguese, for you know, former colonies, so... Um, the peri peri chicken and things like this I did from Mozambique, etc. Um, so uh, now we're going to uh, we've cooked that for two waters. We're going to add a little water to this. I'm going to add. I have to keep track here. I'm adding about half a cup of water to this here, just to have some liquid in there. There's going to be a whole lot of liquid before done, and it's not going to seem to make sense, but there's a reason that there's gonna be a lot of liquid involved. So, uh, now we're gonna add 300 milliliters, or 1.27 cups, of the tomato puree into here. So, here is the tricky part. Uh, trying to figure out how much that's gonna be. Because I started with actual tomatoes. Wow, I think I was just about right. Uh, how many hours is this done? Uh, this should be done um, uh, by 8 o'clock. We should be in uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, there's going to be a certain amount of um, waiting time, which is going to... So get your questions ready. Uh, because uh, the waiting time is... I'm not cooking anything else in the in-between waiting time. Uh, but we've added our tomato puree here, and then we're going to add uh, a chicken bouillon cube. Did I get a splash on the screen? I did. Sorry about that, didn't mean to get that in your eye. Better, better, better like this or better like this? Okay. Hey, 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 Emily, Emma, Emma, Emily. So you need to look up that song. It's called Emma by the group called Hot Chocolate. Look it up on your Spotify, Apple Music, and whatever. In went the chicken bouillon cube. Just like that. Okay. Chicken bouillon cube into the liquid. I need your Dutch oven, and I, I need your Dutch one, and I thought it was 
cute. I read your Dutch one. I thought it was cute. Yes, I feel so bad that I messed it up. Um, although the, the peanut satays were out of this world. And there's this, uh, I don't think I told the story about the, the difficulty in getting the nuts. But hey, I can tell that story. Um, well, in our wait, in between time, but, uh, I know that. Yes, uh, you do, because you read that. Uh, we need to drain, uh, the potatoes. Give me one second. I got my colander right here. Okay, drained potatoes going in. Potatoes. Yay, potatoes. Yeah, potatoes are all Peruvian. All potatoes originated in Peru, in case you did not know. So now, I'm gonna soak this in here. Now, uh, Emily, did I give you, now did I give you a long story of how I wound up finding the nuts uh, for the peanut satay? Because uh, I won't repeat myself if I don't have to. Uh, but they'll give me something to talk about while we wait. Okay, I've added uh, half a cup already, so I need to add about three, about three cups of water to this. And it's gonna seem like a whole lot of water, but there's a method. You know what? Hold on. That's two cups. However, Okay, we're right, we're right on the money. Uh, so we're gonna mix this up again. That's about three cups. That's about three and a half, two and a half cups. So we're looking for four and a quarter cups total. So that's a lot of water. Look at all that water. No, you didn't. Okay, I will tell you the story. Hey, 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 hey. Hey Cheyenne, greetings, thank you for the like and the restream. So that looks like a big bunch of water, but there's a reason for that. One, not the least of which is the cooking the potatoes and uh, getting that chicken bouillon cube to dissolve, but no, wait, there's more. Um, okay. So I uh, have this kind of on a low simmer because it's not gonna be cooking yet because we need to turn our attention over here the couscous and uh, I need to get a tablespoon of water it does not seem like a lot of water but uh, this can involve my hands is it soup no it's not soup it's couscous I need to make sure my hands are very 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 clean for this which they usually are but because this is what happens the a tablespoon of water goes into the couscous, which is not very much, but somehow I need to, with my hands, get, it really does not seem like enough water. Couscous, yum. Um, it really does not seem like there's enough water. Wait to make sure that there are no lumps. It does not seem like enough water. It said one tablespoon of water, and that does not seem enough for this giant amount of couscous. It really doesn't. But you need to, it says you need to break up any lumps. But if it's this dry, I don't see where there could be any lumps if there's only one tablespoon of water. But I think I even triple checked to make sure that I didn't get that wrong. Uh, I'm gonna quadruple check right now. Uh, with my other hand. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Okay. Because this does not seem like enough water. At all. Uh, how much water? No. Uh, and we check the da da. Dried, yes. Yes. Got that. Got that. A tablespoon of water, yes. I'm separating the grains. Oh, now we need a dessert spoon of the olive oil. Okay, good thing I noticed. 
uh, isn't it like per how much of the couscous is in there? Yes, you'd think. Uh, you would be certainly right in thinking that. Um, now olive oil. Yes, I weighed the amount of couscous. The olive oil, now, now this makes sense. Didn't make sense without uh, something else in here. Okay. Dessert spoon of olive oil. And then one more time with the hands. Okay. I should have only done that with one hand. Now, this is saying, here's the other part. It's saying how much um, to use a certain attachment. And uh, there's a whole thing with... Uh, Tunisia here, uh, where the language of things is very different, um, because a tagine, oh, so my mom was cooking, oh, that's so good, I wish I had that had that opportunity, but A, I never had the opportunity to, and me, my mom never cooked, so, um, so I'm stuck here at this age, learning. It's fun, yes, it is, I, 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 I wish I would have had that, that chance then. But then who knows, maybe I wouldn't be here now, so, you know. Things work out the way they work out. Uh, okay, we worked through the couscous, we've added oil to it, and now uh, here is the other weird part. If you had a, a tagine, is a, is a piece, a cooking thing, vessel, uh, that has a little dome on it, is also the word used for dishes made in a tagine. Uh, however, uh, a tagine in Morocco is not the same as a tagine in uh, Tunisia uh, because in Tunisia um, something would be called a, I'm, I'm getting a damp clean dishcloth here, uh, something else in Morocco, which uh, is uh, what you'd call a frittata in uh, in uh, other countries, what you'd call an omelet in other countries, uh, what you'd call a tortilla in Spain, but a tortilla in Mexico is not uh, that, but rather it is a piece of flatbread. So that's a whole different uh, creation. Why didn't she cook? Because we had other people to cook uh, for us, uh, or another person to cook for us. Uh, because... Uh, we're busy with other life things, and life situation was that. So, uh, as my mother says now, she says, it's so funny that you're cooking now because you weren't ever even in the kitchen as a visitor, she said. And I said, well, you didn't cook, so I really couldn't learn, which is kind of why I didn't learn food basics, which is why I was almost accidentally died, uh, because I didn't know not to do certain basic things. Um, about food and cooking and do's and don'ts and never, 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 never do's. Uh, so I almost died uh, because I didn't know, because I never learned. And then I didn't cook for many, many, many years because of that. And now uh, to get over all that, I'm doing this. So it's a long and winding road. So here what we're doing is we're taking the couscous and putting it in what would be some kind of colander uh, here. And we're putting actually a bamboo steamer, and then we're putting that bamboo steamer uh, over the top of the pot or the saucepan. And then uh, I need to turn up the heat a little bit. And we're covering this up thusly. And. Uh, are you kidding me with this? No, stop, back up, not yet, not yet, no, nope. one step, not yet. Okay, I need to get my uh, chickpeas. You almost died, yes, I almost died. Uh, I was in the hospital for a week with the world's worst case of food poisoning. And uh, yes, I almost died, it was very, very bad. So I'm draining my chickpeas and it uh, pains me that, uh, you know what, I'm gonna try not to lose all of this water in here because there's some incredible flavors in the chickpea water. I apologize for not seeing all of this right now. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I need a bowl. I had a bowl. Uh, I'm getting another bowl. Okay. We're gonna need more water in a minute, but I'm gonna try to save this uh, chickpea water because it uh, has a lot of flavor in it. I won't save all of it. But I drained these, I soaked these overnight. It said you can use a can of chickpeas, uh, but I know the flavor is better using um, dried ones that you soaked overnight. Oh gosh, yes, it was very, very bad. Um, I've kind of told that story before, but I'll happily tell it again at some point in the future. Uh, so in go the dried chickpeas in there and also go the uh, the peas, the frozen peas which they could be fresh but these are frozen that such is life and uh, the chilies we have the two serrano chilies that I just scored earlier I'm sorry. Hey, don't be bad. I mean, it's it's bad that it happened, but you know, it all wound up being you know, uh, in in service of of a, of a future good, or at least I had it work out that way anyway. So, it's all good. I've scored those to try to get some of the heat uh, to get out of them. Now this is notice that there's so much liquid in here. It's crazy. This could be so much food. I have an old friend from college who just happened to be in town uh, and just wrote me saying, I'm in town, you know, he's about 45 minutes away. And I said, well, I'm not there, but if you want to come up for dinner, I've got plenty of food. He did not respond back. I mean, yeah, it's probably spur of the moment. Too short notice. Okay, so I'm letting this come up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. Once it comes down to a simmer, this is going to go on top of here, and the steam is going to cook the couscous. But you have to be very, very careful that the steam doesn't burn your face, because it can do that, and that hurts. Uh, you want your face on. You don't want it off. So it's going to be 20 minutes plus 30 minutes. So 45 minutes of dinner is going to be at about 8.10, uh, in case you're wondering. But it's going to be one pot dish. Lots of food. You know what? I can do that because I've got lots of time to kill. Okay. Um, hey, are you Tunisian? No, I am not Tunisian. I am Puerto Rican. But I am doing uh, learning to cook by doing a, cooking a different country in alphabetical order, one country a week, starting from Afghanistan all the way to Zimbabwe. So this is country in week number 177 of 193, and this is Tunisia. And this is night one of three nights of cooking the food of Tunisia. Here I am making a chicken couscous, and we're going to have lots of food left over, which I did not really expect, but it'll be okay. So I hope that answers your question, and I never wish to do any insult to any uh, persons uh, from anywhere in the world who may feel that uh, their food is not being accurately represented in my feeble first-time attempts to learn to cook by doing this project. And that's the, the preface that I always have to say, because once uh, some people got very mad at me for something that I don't think they should have gotten mad at me for. So we're turning this down to uh, a simmer and now we're putting this on top and now we're going to let it cook set timer for 15 minutes and now we're going to let that cook for 15 minutes that's awesome looks delicious thank you it should be really really good it's a, uh, a very well regarded recipe uh, and it uh, appears to be the national dish. I try to do the national dish of any country if I have that opportunity. Sometimes it gets pretty difficult when some countries have, you know, national dish which serves, you know, like 30 people and there's only two people eating here. Uh, lately we've gotten lucky getting friends to come over for dinner. Uh, we did, uh, we're actually may even have someone come over to dinner on Tuesday. So, uh, I am not so scared of dishes that serve so many people. Uh, I have this uh, chickpea water sitting over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to add water later, so you can't see it, but it's sitting right here. So, uh, in those 15 minutes, 
uh, I'm going to clean. Uh, so uh, I uh, happily tell stories. If you have any questions, feel free. Uh, I will answer them as best as I can. Uh, Emily, was uh, who is, lives in the Netherlands here, uh, had looked at the blog, everything is at cliffyland.com, by the way. You can find it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, and YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are of such a mind. Now, uh, but uh, now I'm going to wash and talk. And talk and wash. Because we have some time to kill. And uh, give the husband a break from cleaning. Because I have the time to clean myself. So, uh, when I cooked the Netherlands, uh, right before I started a year ago, almost a year ago, here on Meerkat, uh, I really wanted to do a good job with the Netherlands, particularly because uh, I love the Netherlands, uh, and uh, I some people that I met online are from the Netherlands, and I enlisted their assistance, and a good friend of mine uh, lived there for a long time. Uh, Art Magic, thank you for the like and the restream. Uh, lived there for a long time and gave me the benefit of his knowledge as well. So I wanted to do a good job. As you saw, one of them didn't come out terribly well. Uh, however, one of them did. Uh, it was an all-time great, and that was a peanut satay that I made, which is of Indonesian influence, because in uh, the Netherlands... There are many Indonesian and Surinamese restaurants, basically places that uh, are the food of former Dutch colonies. So since there's so much Indonesian-inspired food, uh, I decided to find this one peanut satay recipe, which is, again, of Indonesian extraction. So I had to, but for this one, to make the peanut satays, for the Netherlands, I need to find a particular Indonesian ingredient called candle nuts. Candle nuts, like light the candle, nuts, like your nuts. Um, and I could not find them. Uh, I usually have places in the area that I can rely upon for hard to find ingredients from country X or Y if I have to. Depending on the continent, you know, I go to the different market. There is one market that I go to, which is the all-purpose, huge, global market where they have every ingredient you could imagine, and they don't know where any of them are. So you can plan on spending a whole day looking for one stupid thing, assuming they have it. So, but I could not find the candle nuts. I was very, very frustrated. On this particular day, and I don't think this is in the blog, on this particular day, uh, it was a Saturday, like today, and uh, I planned on going down from where we live up here in, the, in Jupiter, Florida, which is about two hours north of Miami, an hour and a half, an hour, two hours, depending where you're going, down to Miami, but instead of taking the highway, which would take about two hours, I was going to take the local route, which is the kind of the one expressway that goes all the way along the eastern coast of the United States, uh, which is like lots of stoplights and stuff. And I said, you know what, I'm going to stop at every Indian market, every Asian market I can find and ask if they have candle nuts. And so I did. And I called and uh, we called from the car and we drove and every place I went said, I have no idea what you're talking about. We don't have that. No, we don't have that. And all day we drove all the way down. Uh, the, at the end of the day, we were going to wind up in Miami and meet a friend to go to a movie. By the time we finally got down to Miami, in case actually Miami Beach, which is, if you've ever been, very crowded and an irritating place to go. It's nice if you're a tourist and like to party, not nice if you're not. Uh, the, the friend flaked out and said, oops, sorry, I didn't realize I had to buy tickets in advance, I didn't know they were sold out. So I said, listen, you buy the tickets, you take these tickets, now we're stuck two hours away from home without plans. And I don't have my candle nuts for cooking in the Netherlands, which is what I wanted in the first place. So uh, I'm on the phone, I'm looking in all of Miami, and I found that there's an Indonesian market. The only Indonesian market in all of South Florida is in downtown Miami. I called them, they said, yes, we have candle nuts. I said, that's terrific. What time do you close? We close at seven. What time is it now? 6.30. How long does it take to get there? 40 minutes. You can't make it. 
so dejected. I thought I've wasted a whole day. I wanted those candle nuts. I could not find those candle nuts for lover money. Dejected, we looked to the phone and noticed that uh, we remembered that there had been an in Indonesian restaurant in Miami Beach that we had wanted to go to. It's about the only Indonesian restaurant around. And uh, they serve something that is popular in the Netherlands, which is called a rice table. Uh, XXX. Um, Titi, thank you for the restream. Uh, so, uh, in the Netherlands, well, sorry, when the Netherlands uh, colonized Indonesia, uh, they had people come over to the Netherlands and they wanted to show off the food of the country and so to show off the indonesian food to their other european friends they invented this thing called the rice table which i forgot what it translates to uh however it basically is a platter serving a whole you know like 40 50 different dishes all on one big platter and this is not a way that indonesians normally eat their food uh, but it has become a staple of Indonesian restaurants because the Dutch would serve the Indonesian food this way. So we found this Indonesian restaurant, and we got in. We got the last two tables at the restaurant, and the nice lady, you know, we sat at the bar, and the nice lady behind the bar, I said to her, you're in an Indonesian restaurant. Do you have any, I bet you have candle nuts hiding back there. She says, yes, she brought me out here for you, gift. So I got free candle nuts and a fantastic dinner. And I wound up making a great peanut sauté. And that is what uh, I made for the Netherlands, or one of the dishes I made for the Netherlands, as you will see on the blog at clickyland.com. And that is the story of the candle nuts and Clicky's grand adventure. I am feeling very weak right now. No, I did not have enough for lunch, but there's gonna be plenty for dinner, so there's that. So I'm getting a chance to clean up because we're waiting for the chicken couscous to cook. In case you're wondering what the heck is going on, who's this crazy person talking to himself in his kitchen? How are you? Are you new here? How long have you been using Meerkat? Do you enjoy it? Where are you from? Have you, how long have you been using Meerkat? I heard um, in a lot of stuff has been going on as I make plans for phase two. The uh, second half of this year is going to be very interesting uh, because we finish with Zimbabwe at the end of July. So we've got plans. But I'm making plans. Hello, Emily. Uh, so, what is I getting at? Making plans. Oh, yes. Uh, someone in this whole back and forth of me making plans said, listen, the weirdest thing just showed up in my inbox, this other person's inbox, about a uh, thing. Oh, Emily, you're back. Well, you missed the whole story then. You have to see it on YouTube. Uh, Wad, thank you for the restream. And uh, Art Magic, you are Michael. Thank you for the like and the restream. You missed the whole story. You're going to have to see it on, uh, on YouTube then. I told the whole story of the candle nuts. I did not realize you weren't there. I apologize. So check it out on YouTube. It'll be up, I'll be up there in the morning. Just at YouTube slash Cookie Land. And fast forward to this part here and then go back. Crap then. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I can't tell it a second time. It's not that exciting. It's just something I was doing to kill time. I don't think I'm that interesting. Anywho. Uh, wait, is the Dutch one on YouTube? No, unfortunately it's not. It's before, uh, the ones on YouTube, uh, the one, um, there's some early Meerkat ones on YouTube before I knew that I could save them. So those are kind of haphazard, but the very first one I did on Meerkat 
was almost a year ago. This is week number 177. A week ago we were doing country number 126, which was uh, 25, 25, which was Nicaragua. And uh, just a few weeks later, uh, we did Oman, which is week number 129. That week I did on uh, Periscope, and I had one person watch. It was a nice person, and he talked, and it was pleasant enough, uh, but there was one lonely, lonely person. And so I decided to switch to Meerkat uh, for Pakistan, which was night number 130, 140, 141. No, hold on. One, 130 was Oman, 1... No, I am so confused. 130 was Oman, 131 was Pakistan. So that was the very first country I did on Meerkat. Which is... Uh, so our one year anniversary will be in, what, six weeks? One, two, three... Something like that. One, two, three, four... One, two, three, four. Four weeks. In four weeks will be our one year anniversary on Meerkat. So, uh, and that will be Uganda, which will be our 51st, which will be our next African country, ironically, after this one. This is North Africa. We haven't done that many North African countries. I mean, we've done all the ones there are, but there just aren't that many compared to the rest of Africa. But you know what? If there's enough people, how many people are here? 28? Okay, so after I do the next thing, if I get enough people asking, I'm gonna try my party trick. But, you know, I feel like uh, Peter Pan after, you know, you have to, do you believe in fairies? Which is kind of appropriate. Um, thinking about maybe doing my party trick, but I have to get enough people to ask for it, because otherwise not because it requires a lot of concentration. Uh, two minutes left before step the next step on that, which really isn't much. Uh, but we're gonna check it. We're gonna check it. So what do we got over here? We've got our couscous. This, since it is a grain, I never know uh, if there's any um, anything in there. Yes, I do. Okay, you've got a vote from Emily. Anybody else? You need votes, votes on the party trick. If you, if you, if you want to see me do the party trick, we need, we need, we need more votes. I've done it once before. I kind of screwed up, and I probably will screw up again. But uh, I will try. Meanwhile, we're waiting on this for just a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes more. We got to clean up nicely, though. Thank you for keeping me company. We have uh, one minute left. I'm gonna get me a drink of water. So thirsty. Like I said, there was a picnic outside in the pouring rain today. It was not very exciting. We have 34 seconds. And uh, I love, I love fairies. Well, you're in the right place, girl. Okay. Take back the words. Reclaim the words is more the, uh, the appropriate phrase. Okay, we have a few more seconds. Uh, and just to make sure, we need to make sure nothing is stuck to the bottom of the pot. We need to make sure I don't burn my face. Uh, I see... Okay, ding, ding, ding. Oh, here it goes. Making sure I don't burn my face. Okay, you can be quiet now. Shush. Okay. This is steamy. This is hot. Steamy hot. Going this way. Okay. So it is a bubbling. Uh, I like the Chinese steamer. Uh, thank you. I it's It's been phenomenal. I can't believe... I, I did without it for so long. I just, uh, if you look at the old blogs, you'll see all I had at all was the uh, steamer attachment, the metal thingy that goes in the bottom of this, which would not work for this at all. It said to use a colander type thing. I mean, if you had a tagine, the, the thing that is a tagine, um, 
then um, you'd be in business, but uh, we're not. So we have, uh, we don't need to add more water. There's plenty of water here. Uh, I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. And uh, meat cooked, at, uh, okay, 30 minutes. So this goes back on for 30 minutes. Set timer for 30 minutes. Now this is the part where we have to kill a lot of time. So you're gonna have to keep me company. So here's the part where the party tricks. Uh, Osgem, I hope I got that right. Thank you for the like. Uh, and already, already, already. Uh, if I needed to add more water, I would have, but uh, I didn't need to yet. So this chickpea water may go to waste. Let me make sure I got that uh, cleaned off, because uh, you look a, you're looking a little blurry still. Something splashed the tomato puree smashed on your little face. Uh, how are you? Huh? You're a little blurry, blurry like this, blurry like this, blurry like this. Still blurry up here. What are you cooking? I am making one of the national dishes of Tunisia, which is a chicken couscous, uh, which is sitting underneath here. We have the couscous cooking here in the uh, steamer, which is on top of the saucepan in which all the chicken, etc., is cooking. And uh, I've got all those lens flare issues, which are kind of crazy. Because uh, when I was making the tomato puree, some stuff got on the lens. So that's what's cooking there. And now uh, we wait. We wait for uh, 28 more minutes. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I have uh, put out the call. If anyone wants to see me do my, uh, my global cooking party trick, I will do it, but I need more people to ask for it because it's a lot of effort. And I want to know people are seeing it. It sounds so nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, S. Yang. Thank you, yes, I, uh, learning to cook by doing, uh, cooking the food of a different country in alphabetical order, working on my way around the world, you doing the 193, 193 UN member states from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. I'm going in the alphabetical order of English, uh, the official, you know, chosen name. So some countries insist on being known by their name in their language. So instead of Ivory Coast, it's Cote d'Ivoire. Instead of Timor, East Timor is Timor Leste. Uh, so, but that's the only thing. So we're going from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. And this is country number 177 of 193. This is night number one of three. There's tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So tonight is the, the, not a tagine, it's a chicken couscous. And uh, tomorrow, if I'm lucky, I'm going to be doing something, a lamb dish, which I wish would involve quince, but I can't find quince. So we're going to have to go with green pear, and not a pear that is the color green, but rather a pear that is unripe. Limitations in language. If you speak a language other than English, you would know that there are so many things that just don't translate, or don't translate well. And green uh, is one of them. But green unripe as opposed to green the color. Thank you for the follow. Thank you. Uh, S, uh, I'm just going to call you S, S Yang. Uh, where is everyone from? If you are, if you can hear me, if you feel like sharing. Uh, I have my globe right here. We've done most of these already. Uh, right now, of course, we're doing Tunisia, which is right there in the north of Africa. Tunis, the capital, uh, bordered by Algeria and Libya and the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, troubled, as many countries are, but not as troubled as, as others. So uh, they're having troubles, a lot of, you know, terrorism stuff from around uh, Libya and Algeria. Uh, but they're doing their level best. Sean! Hello, Sean! How are you? Uh, if I may ask, where are you? If you feel like sharing. I never want to, you know, insist on knowing where people are from if they don't feel like sharing. Uh, but I'm always curious where people are. Uh, I'm going to clean this off because I've got time. And again, if anyone feels like the party trick, 
I just need two more votes for the party trick, and then the party trick can happen. We have one. Emily has offered to watch. These are Tunisian rhythms we are listening to now. Sadao uh, Tiani 4 4. Who do we have here? Uh, hi, Cliff from London. Uh, you're Cliff? I'm Cliff. Or hi, Cliff. You're from London. I don't know. Are you also a Cliff? If you're from London, there's a better chance that you are one than not. Uh, DJ CJ. You could be it. You have a C. You could be another Cliff. I'm, I'm a Cliff Clifford. Uh, there is a Clifton who is uh, out, uh, uh, around oftentimes. He usually comes through, says hello. Um, but that's it. There aren't a whole lot. Maybe there's been one other Cliff that, that uh, I've encountered on here. Not a, In the United States, a, uh, a person named Cliff is usually going to be um, of a certain age... Uh, and depending whether Cliff or Clifford or Clifton um, of a different race, uh, but not always. Uh, thank you for the like and the restream, uh, Arif. Greetings, hello, salam, saludos, uh, whatever. Welcome to the Global Cooking Challenge. We're sitting here waiting while our chicken couscous cooks. And I'm still waiting on two more votes for the party trick. Well, we wash and clean and we wait. Again, everything's on the blog at cliffyland.com. Follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and YouTube. Back, Emily's back. Yeah, still haven't done the party trick, but if you go away and I say I'm going to do it, you know, be sure to stick around because you're going to want to see it. But I can always save it for another time. I can save it for the big finale. In uh, July. July is when Zimbabwe happens. Zimbabwe will be the last of the 193 countries. Uh, well, the internet is not good here. It just came back. Oh, uh, I am sorry the internet is not good where you are. Uh, that kind of sucks. Um, I, I, I don't know how much I want to necessarily share here. But... Uh, my mom needed help. Not a problem. That happens, you know. It's, you, you have your life on the other end, you know. I can, I can only presume what's happening. Uh, no, my global tra traveling f friend that I always keep, you know, harping about, who got the Guinness World Record for going to every country in the world without flying, it took him four years, started, uh, he, you know, lives in, lived in Liverpool, but he started in South America, and he went, it was really crazy. Look, I'll, I've got time to kill. Really sucks. Yeah, life happens. Oh, oh, you mean the internet. Now that really sucks, yeah. So he flew from Liverpool and then flew down to, uh, where did he go? To uh, Buenos Aires. He started in Buenos Aires and uh, he just had to go by land and just hit every country and take off. So sometimes he was just there for an hour, sometimes he was there for months or years, depending how stuck he got. But he went from here and went to Uruguay, Argentina, Buenos Aires, Paraguay, Bolivia, Peru, uh, up through Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, uh, to Suriname. He did not go to French Guinea because that wasn't a, uh, it's not an independent nation. So Then he went to the Caribbean, went through uh, Trinidad to Grenada, to Barbados, to St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Lucia, and uh, I don't know what else I'm missing through there, Grenada and uh, skipped Puerto Rico, because that's not an independent nation. Went to Dominican Republic, got stuck there, because he didn't realize that there are not ferries that connect all these things. So that was a big pain, and uh, he was very, very stuck trying to get uh, someone to take him on his journey. Uh, Chalang, uh, greetings, hello, salam. Uh, thank you for the restream. Anyway, he went from Dominican Republic over to Haiti, back to Dominican Republic, then uh, took a boat to uh, Jamaica, and then uh, got to... Where did he get to? Uh, he got to Mexico, I believe, and then he went down through Guatemala, Belize, to El Salvador, Nicaragua, Honduras, 
uh, Costa Rica to Panama and then back up. Oh, by the way, he lives in Panama now. Um, all the way back up through Mexico, through the United States, through Texas, down to Florida, and then he took a boat to the Bahamas, but he hoped someone would take him on a boat down to Cuba because of the embargo, which has now sort of been lifted. But then he couldn't get anyone, even though he was not an American, and even if the other person weren't American, to take him from Florida to Cuba. So after being stuck in Florida for a long, long time, that's where we are, by the way, um, he finally got someone to take him uh, semi-illegally to Cuba and then uh, he had to get back through to Mexico and went back all the way over and then all the way to New York and then up through Canada to Nova Scotia where he got a boat that took him across to Iceland and then he went through the Faroe Islands which are somewhere up here uh, which took him, I think he landed back in the Netherlands and from there he went back home to uh, England and went to Scotland, Wales, uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland and back in about a day. And then he went back across to get to Belgium and France and Germany and Switzerland and then, uh, then he went up to Denmark, uh, Sweden, Norway and Finland and then somehow uh, worked his way to, uh, he skipped Russia there. Kind of wound up going back through Poland and then through uh, was it Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and tried to get into Russia. Hey, Paul, how you doing? So many places. Yes. Yay for the Netherlands. Yay for the Netherlands. Uh, he tried to get into Russia. It was a long, complicated thing. He sort of crossed the border, but not officially, and almost got arrested. And so he counted Russia, but he eventually had to go back and do it again, uh, which sucked. But then he went back down, got Belarus and Ukraine and Moldova and Romania and uh, Hungary and the Czech Republic and... Uh, Slovak, uh, Slovakia and Austria and Liechtenstein and Luxembourg and Switzerland and Italy and San Marino and then uh, he tried to get to uh, what they do oh yeah somewhere in here he did Macedonia and Croatia and he did Kosovo which you know that's a technical thing uh, and um, what am I missing Montenegro and Albania and Greece and Romania no Romania that's Romania uh, I don't know why I'm blanking on that. Uh, it'll come back to me. Uh, that is Romania. Uh, but then he wound up going back to Spain, to Andorra, to Portugal. And then he took a boat down. There's a part of Spain that's in the part of uh, northern part of Morocco. Well, technically, it's actually Spain. Did I miss anything as I didn't tell me you were on? Oh, well, the whole meal actually is sitting back there. And we're just waiting for it to cook for another 17 minutes. I'm retelling the travels of my global traveling friend who went to every country in the world without flying. So finally, this is still year one. Uh, Florida, yes, we're in Florida over here. Anyway, he got across to Morocco and, oh, that's it, when he was here he did Malta and then he did Tunisia, where we are now, and he thought he could pick up Libya and Algeria by quickly jumping across the border on either side, but they wouldn't let him across either way, so he was stuck. He couldn't get to these two. So he had one little country here. So after he got back around, he did Morocco and Western Sahara, which is eh, a complicated situation. Hi, husband. Emily says hello. Hello. Um, then he got down to Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, uh, Guinea-Bissau, and Guinea, and uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and Liberia, and Ghana, and Sierra Leone. And then, oh, he went up to the Central African Republic, and there's a part there where all three sort of come together. So he jumped across the border, got Mali and uh, Niger uh, together there, and then came back down to Ghana through uh, Togo and Benin and Nigeria, and he had to go super fast through Nigeria because, you know, he almost died. And, oh, but then he had to go on a boat. Uh, where, where did he leave from? Oh, from Senegal, sorry. From Senegal, he tried to get a boat to the Cape Verde Islands, but when he got there, they thought he was a people smuggler, so he was stuck in jail for a week, and no one knew where he was. And it was very dramatic. Uh, he he just got some people to take him on a boat, and he thought that... I mean, he told them where he was coming, and the visas, and they didn't believe him. And so it took, like, an international army to get him out. But, he, you know, he finally got out and kept going. So uh, finally he made it down to uh, Cameroon. He went up to... Uh, this is Chad and Central African Republic. And uh, then to Equatorial Guinea, which is very, very difficult to get into. Togo was the one last night that was... Uh, Togo? 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 No, Tonga. No, Tonga. Togo was two nights ago. Yes, two weeks ago. But yes, Togo and Tonga, alphabetical, not geographical, next to each other. 
uh, Equatorial Guinea, um, Gabon, and Central African Republic, and there he got arrested again for no good reason for about a week, and no one knew where he was, and they had to take get him out of there. Then he got over to Democratic Republic of Congo, and down to Angola and Namibia when everything got a lot better. He got to South Africa and Swa uh, Lesotho and Swaziland and uh, Botswana and uh, and uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia and uh, Mozambique, and then he went across to Madagascar and got Comoros in there, and he also saw some other islands uh, that are not, you know, international countries, uh, like Reunion, and then back over to Malawi and Rwanda and to Tanzania. No, there's Malawi, and no, that's Malawi there, and uh, Rwanda and Burundi, and then up to Canada and Somalia, but he didn't go into Somalia, the part that you're thinking about. Sorry for that, my mind is big as a snail house. Don't worry about it. No worry about it at all. Um, and so, uh, but uh, South Sudan wasn't a country yet, because uh, this is still 2009. And he thought he could do the whole world in one year, but it took him four. So uh, he went into the top, uh, went through um, Kenya to Ethiopia to Djibouti to the northern part of Somalia, which is called Somaliland, which isn't as dangerous as the part of Somalia that you're used to hearing about. And then from there, he went to Sudan and then back to Egypt. No, no, but he couldn't get uh, this way. So he had to take a boat that took him, uh, so he hit uh, Saudi Arabia quickly and then got back to uh, uh, Egypt. And the year one, he finished in Egypt at the pyramids and he got the world record for most countries in one year without flying. But then he continued going down uh, through, uh, he kind of snuck into Israel and Jordan and Palestine and Syria before, you know, everything. And then uh, he worked his way down uh, through, uh, where did he go? He went through Syria to Turkey, and then, yeah, that's when he got uh, Turkey in, and he got in, uh, what am I looking at, Georgia, and uh, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, and uh, then he got Iran, which he absolutely loved. He said it was the friendliest, nicest people in the whole world ever were in Iran. And then Iraq, he got into Kurdistan, and he loved the people there. He said very, very nice. And then he got down to, uh, through Iran, got to Kuwait, and then came down and got uh, Bahrain and Qatar and United Arab Emirates and Oman and Yemen, just the part of Yemen before it kind of exploded. And then he had to figure out how to get to the rest of the world. Uh, and he was stuck here for a long time. He was stuck in Kuwait for a long time. And then somehow he got back up over the Caucasus into... Now I'm looking this upside down. Uh, the, so Turkmenistan to uh, Kyrgyzstan to Kazakhstan to... Wait a minute. Tajik, Tajikistan to, to Kyrgyzstan to uh, Afghanistan, uh, and he actually did a nice time, a short time in Afghanistan, down to uh, Pakistan, and then to India, and then down to Sri Lanka, and then back through India to Nepal, he did Tibet, uh, and Bhutan, and Bangladesh, and then over to uh, Myanmar, and then down to Thailand, and Singapore, and then Indonesia, where he quickly made his way over to Timor Leste, which is over here, and then worked his way back up through Malaysia, and then back over a boat to Cambodia and Vietnam, uh, over to Laos, and then over through Hong Kong, he got a boat over to the Philippines, and uh, then had to go back to China, and then to Taiwan, and then back over, and then he went to South Korea, and then he went across the border into North Korea, in this little part where you, there's a table in the middle between North and South, literally a table, between North and South Korea in a room, and half of it is literally in North Korea, and half of it is literally in South Korea, and he went to the other side of the room, so he was in North Korea. Um, so he got North Korea done. He went to uh, Japan, back to South Korea, and then back to the Philippines, and eventually back to Indonesia, and then he went over to Papua New Guinea, 
where he got to uh, back down to Australia and got to New Zealand and then back to Australia and then he was stuck there for a year while I was trying to get to Tonga and and Fiji and Palau and Tuvalu and Vanuatu and Kiribati and Nauru and that took him a whole year just to get any place you know here because the boats don't really connect and they're all like all scattered out in the middle of the Pacific. And then from there, he had to work his way all the way back, and he had to pick up the Seychelles, but no one would take him because of the Somali pirates that were all in the Indian Ocean. So he got to the, uh, to the Seychelles, and then he was really stuck trying to get to Mauritius here, um, and he finally did uh, somehow manage to get someone to take him uh, because the Somali piracy had started to die down. He finally got to South Sudan after the end of four years, and that was 200 countries, 201, actually, that he did the entire world. We're doing 193 UN member states. I don't know if anyone's listening, so I won't do my party trick. But I'll do it some other time. So, anyway, I was talking to him. And, uh, and I actually talked to him for the first time, voice, on the phone, yesterday night. It was super, super cool. We're going to be doing something together. He's my hero. So, if anyone heard any part of that, something exciting will be happening in the future, which will be a joint project between me and the guy. Emily, well, I can count on you, Emily. So, but it's going to be a joint project for the world, in the whole world, big blue marble. But when I, after I finish Zimbabwe, since I'm killing time, um, there are some countries that are not UN member states that take up a certain amount of space on this big ball that, uh, like Greenland is part of Denmark, Denmark here, um, but it's really the same country. Thank you for the story. Oh, Lavender Famchi, thank you, you were listening. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. The thing is that I memorized it. When he, I mentioned before, if you go to YouTube uh, and search for every country in the world, every country on the world without flying, or every country without flying, glad to see a joint project. Yes, it's going to be exciting. He's, he's the guy who took on the world and did it. So he's much more optimistic than I am. But... Um, I'm hoping. It should be very exciting. But after I finish, uh, I'm going to do Puerto Rico because that's where my people are from. Puerto Rico. Right there. Uh, territory slash Commonwealth of the United States. Uh, complicated place, as everyone is. But I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do a few disputed territory slash sovereign states like Western Sahara, which uh, is claimed by Morocco. Uh, but is... Act but is um, they speak Spanish and not Arabic because it was a Spanish colony before <coughs> stuff happened. I always listen, you're so smart. Thank you. Thank you, Lavender Femchi. Uh, I want to get uh, French Guiana, French Guiana because that's a, a French territory, um, but it takes up a lot of space on the globe, so I want to fill in the map. Um, of course, Palestine uh, because that counts. Uh, Vatican City, I kind of say it doesn't count, but, you know, I mean, it's not really, but yeah, I'll do a Roman dish. Uh, do the Taiwan, because, you know, it's its own thing, even though it's the other thing. I might throw in Tibet, you know, same complicated issue. You should, take, yes, uh, Linda, uh, Emily, I'm going to put pins when I go around for phase two. Um, so, yes, I have the pins already, but it's going to get really crowded, like in Europe. Because everything's all bunched together in Europe, whereas, you know, and in Western Africa, whereas, you know, out here, not so much. Um, but I'm thinking Taiwan, Tibet, uh, Kosovo. Um, the, I was wondering if Kosovo would be a UN member state by the time I finish this. They've been working on it, um, but, you know, they've got to get their ducks in a row, and Serbia isn't really cool with it, so they need to, you know... Because Serbia still says, no, that's just a breakaway republic of ours. So, um, Kosovo. Uh, but most people, when they talk about countries, all the countries in the world, they say 196. 
or 200 or any number. Because sometimes they also say England and Wales and France. Uh, England and Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland uh, as their own countries. Uh, in I have done that. What, the pins? Very cool. Yes, um, when I got the globe, it came with pins. And I said, well, I don't want to start now by filling in everything I've already done. I'm going to wait till I go back around and start over. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I've been to Iceland. Long time ago. It was very nice. Did not get to see the puffins, though. But anyway, people do like, say, 196 countries uh, because there's complicated stuff. You know, Macau, Hong Kong, part of China, officially now. You know, so... Uh, but then there's all these other, you know... Russian enclaves in the former things that like you've heard about the whole business with Ukraine So, you know complicated stuff like that And I don't want to do like Russian enclave one and Russian enclave two and then there's a million other territories the island territories throughout the whole world that belong to France or the Netherlands or or uh, England or what have you and I don't want to do another hundred dishes of island dishes because there's more islands than just about anything. Herbie, my good man, how are you? Hector, thank you for the like. Thank you, thank you for the like, Hector. Oh, so, that's the world. And we have five more minutes to go. Until then. So I might as well start getting my plates ready. Um, we have 19, 19? 19 people here. So, um, I'll save the party trick for some other time. I've kind of all, I've done a variation on it just now. Um, for what it's worth. But, you know, keep you in suspense. Someday when I have like 35, you know, 40 people on at once, maybe then. Okay, so now what we've got going here, oh, there's a few more steps. Because after this is ready, um, there, uh, I need to get this ready. After the chicken couscous, which is sitting in here, is uh, ready, I have to make sure it's not clumping, um, and, uh, get a fork, I need a fork to fluff it, and then there's going to be, uh, an odd trick that's going to involve a bowl and a colander, which is going to be strange and complicated, because the liquid that is still in here is going to go, the couscous is going to go in here, and then the liquid from in there is going to go through this onto the couscous, which is in here, and it's got to soak in. And then, normally this would be served on a big platter. But, uh, I really hate losing this chickpea water, because that's so tasty. Uh, but we'll see if we need more water. But that's kind of how it's going to work. So this gets dumped out of this into this bowl here. That's the couscous, and it gets fluffed. That's the next step to take in three minutes. Three minutes. Mm -mm. The capital of Tunisia is Tunis. Tunis. If you go on a Mediterranean cruise, you may wind up in Tunis. But because of, you know, stuff, so many... Uh, there's uh, issues with the cruise ship saying, hey, yeah, maybe we don't want to go there, which is a shame. They had that whole thing a few months ago. Tragedy. Horrible, 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 horrible tra tra tragedy. Um, so uh, it, it affects the tourist trade, which is a shame because Tunisia is one of those countries that relies a good deal on, on tourism dollars. Uh, two minutes. Two minutes left. <coughs> two minutes left. Uh, on this. I'm hearing it bubbling. I'm hearing it bubbling. Do, 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 Herbie, how are you doing, Herbie? How's, how's the uh, lift business? Are you still there? Are you still with us, Herbie? 26 watchers. These viewers are watching from the web and not the app. I'll believe you. Hmm, how many people do watch from the web? I don't know. I've only watched from the web things a couple times. Normally I just watch through the app. It makes it difficult when I need to do something else though. I'm just talking to myself. I'm so sorry. Uh, it is 8.12. 8.12 p.m. We have 1 minute and 17 seconds to go. 
And then there'll be another, what, five after that. And then we're going to watch TV. What are we going to watch? We have... Yeah, he wants to see more. He wants to finish off House of Cards. I mean, I want to finish it off too. Not that I'm enjoying it, but, you know, I want to see how it ends. Me at times. Oh, really? Uh, I, I would watch on the web sometimes. Um, oh, but uh, what's happening? Watch on the web, somebody would turn it sideways, and then I'm going like this, which is hard to do on the computer. Take your laptop, turn it sideways. Uh, on Periscope, that turns around, but... Uh, a meerkat on the web, then you're just like this. So, oh darn, there's a thing. The, that's what I was getting at like hours ago before I uh, I got this email talking about a thing called nom 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 like nom 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 nom, uh, which is sort of like what this meerkat is, but just for food, where. You can do your live streaming of your cooking. It's all about cooking and all about food. And people can schedule their streams and have live streams and record their things and put it on. Then people comment. And it's um, maybe there's an app, but it's on the web. And I don't know if anyone has anyone tried it. Has anyone tried this nom thing? Do you like it? Do you, have you never heard of it? Let me know. Okay, Steam's going to go this way. Not at my face. Okay. Hot. Maybe do this. Okay. Steamy. That's bubbling. Okay. Steamy couscous. Can you see? You can't see. Okay. I will move you so you can see. Don't fall in. So cool. Yeah. Um. If anyone has, let me know. I'm curious about it. I don't know if there's an app or not. Um. I saw the website. So here is our couscous. We need to fluff it with a fork to make sure there are no clumps. There's mm, little clumps. Okay. I'm gonna taste a little bit. Mm, doesn't have a whole lot of flavor to start. However, yes I can. You can check it out. I think that's what you said. That would be very cool. Duh! Now I can't see. Okay. <coughs> Yowza. Ah, my hand. Burning, 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 burning. Steaming hot, burning. Okay. So that's going to be fun to wash. Oh, goody. I got... Couscous everywhere. Okay. We'll figure you out later. Meanwhile, we're going to fluff you with a fork. Fluff you with a fork. Your new insult of choice. Um, fork, 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 fork. Where did my fork go here? Yeah. Okay, fluffing. Uh, once it out. Once it out in sink. Oh, rinse it out. Oh, rinse it out in the sink. That makes sense. Yes. I will do that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I need to take this and put that here. Take a picture. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. And then here's the tricky part. This big vat of oh, stuff. Uh, Niels, my goodness, how you doing? Thank you, how you doing? Thank you for liking the restream. Good seeing you, my friend. You're dumping out all this good stuff. Good stuff. Into the colander. Into the couscous. You know, the funny thing is I can see what I'm doing in my reverse. Just finished a wine drinking evening. Yes, you have so many great meals. I see it on Snapchat and on Facebook and stuff. Okay. So now that is in there. So what we're going to do right here is go back. Uh, we've added the this into here. Now I'm going to take this stuff and put it back in the pot. 
Hopefully without dripping all over creation. And go. Don't fall. I need like three hands for this. Okay. Okay. Why is it sometimes I'm, I'm right-handed? You'd think I'd feel comfortable doing this with my right hand, but you'd be wrong. Okay. This goes back in here for some unknown reason that I don't understand. Red wine is dangerous. It can be. But it has tannins. It's got electrolytes. I don't know if anyone gets that reference. Yeah, it can be. So are, are, does that mean you're loopy? Are you loopy, Nils? Are you all loopy? Uh, drain meat back in saucepan. Using spoon. Spoon. Fold. Sauce into couscous. So that's what we're going to do now. And this has to sit for five minutes. So dinner is later, even later than I thought. This is me starting early, too. So folding this uh, lovely cooking sauce into the couscous to let it absorb. And it should not be runny. It should not be runny or sloppy or wet. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna wind up that way a little bit. Well, that's always fun. To be a little loopy is fun. To be, you know, hammered, that's a different situation. But feeling, as we say in Puerto Rican, un poquito nice. Un poquito nice. Okay, we're folding, and we're folding, and we're folding, and we're walking, and we're walking, and we're walking. It must be very late there. Hi back, Emily. So Belgium, say hello Netherlands. Netherlands, Belgium. Greetings. Greetings, neighbors. The Flemish to the Dutch. I know those are very similar. Okay, so five, so like another four minutes. We're gonna let that sit. And then what happens? Now normally this would be served in a big, you know, thing for everyone to eat all at once. When you're cooking England, because I remember that you will play a song for me when you are cooking England. Uh, okay. Um, that would be the United Kingdom, which would be one of three nights of the United Kingdom. I don't know which one it's going to be yet. Uh, probably the first one, or maybe the last one, or maybe the middle one. Um, but uh, that'll be in May. It'll be towards the middle or the end of May for United Kingdom. I think it was like up from, the name escaped me, up from, live, oh, live it up. Oh, live it up, live it up? Live it up. Just forks, knives too? And... Uh, forks should do it, because the meat is very tender. Oh, that's what I was going to do, I was going to taste it. Belgium and Dutch are the same. Ah, there you go. Um, I hate to dump this water, but there, it just got dumped. Okay, let's give this a taste. Let's start tasting some stuff here. Just with a different accent. Ah. Sort of like, uh, well, lots of things. We say uh, England and the United States, two nations divided by a common language. But different parts of this country. We barely understand each other. Got some heat. Like the heat. Got some flavor. Tasty. Good. Very flavorful. Don't think I would add anything. Now, over to what's in here. Uh, still have the Serrano chili to live it up. Mental as anything. Oh, yes. Were they British? I mean, they might have been. For some insane reason, I'm thinking that they might have been Australian, but I'm not sure. Potato. Tasty. Spicy. Very spicy. And there's no lack of spice here. There's some heat here. That's good. Let's try some of the chicken in there. Uh, 
Okay, chicken, little piece of the chicken, see how that tastes. Chicken, chicken, chicken. I'm gonna have to check that out. I don't know if I have that song. I mean, I can get it. But I usually have everything already. That's what I'm saying. Tasty, tender, spicy. <clears throat> Very spicy. Feels like I could use a little more salt. Feels like it needs a little more salt, it really does. Or was it something else? Uh, I sent it to you a couple months ago. Oh! Um, could be a number of things. You sent me a couple things. Maybe it was that. Okay. Okay, so we're still waiting. Uh, what, another two minutes? Okay. Give it another, another taste. I'm so glad it's a Saturday. I'm not quite as stressed about time. Okay, imagine this here. And tell us anything. Mmm! Mmm, that's good. It's very good. So meanwhile, we can see over here that this is um, started to absorb the liquid. I will check it out. Which is good, it's not watery. It has absorbed so much of that liquid. It's already Sunday here, I know. I know, that's crazy. Think about traveling the world and gaining and losing days. This. Uh, same, what country are you in? Uh, Niels is in Belgium. You're in the Netherlands. I am in the in the USA. Okay, here we go. So time's up. Time is up. So uh, let's move you over here. Hey, everybody, fly. Don't get hooked on the coffee machine. Okay. Uh, who are we looking at? Woodruff. Thank you for the like. Okay, this is, couscous is gonna land here. Hot, 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 silver. Okay, so going with the couscous, the big vat of couscous. Jeez, I'm debating whether I should cook tomorrow at all. Cause there's so much left over here. Smooth it out, and normally this would be served on a platter. Uh, that's next to each other, durr. Yes, it is. So smoothing it out. Like that, the couscous. Do you speak? You're speaking. Uh, I, I assume you're talking to Niels, uh, uh, Flemish. Uh, who are we looking at? Uh, Lord Ma Temi Tope Samuel. Hello. Thank you for the like. Uh, this is our couscous for our chicken couscous from Tunisia. We're having our night, our first night in Tunisia. If you're a jazz fan, you know what that means. A Night in Tunisia, one of the greatest jazz songs ever. By Thelonious Monk. Not the loneliest monk, but Thelonious Monk. So flattening that out. Boy, that's a lot left over. I'm a chef too, you are? Well, that is fantastic because uh, me, it's a whole learning to cook challenge here, starting from zero, uh, 177 weeks in. Uh, cooking our 177th country. I don't even know uh, how many uh, actual dishes that comprises, but now we're gonna stick our, uh, our chicken couscous our, our, I, uh, onto here, our vegetables and our chicken. I'm assuming I'm cooking tomorrow. I'm not guaranteeing it at this point because this is a lot of food. But I am damn hungry because I did not have lunch. So that is dish number one. Uh, you are doing well, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
I want to make sure I give you a ride. Davey, greetings. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm not putting the serrano chili pepper in to onto the plate. Ah! Avalanche. Normally this would be served platter, you know, in the middle of a table, but we're not doing that. See, I invited people over in the, in the crazy caves that they were interested, uh, but it was kind of last minute, so they didn't come. But I have... Holy moly, are you Dutch? Oh, you're talking to each other. Uh, yes, she lives in the Netherlands. Emily lives in the Netherlands. But now we're almost done. So I need to take my pictures. And then we go. Yeah, yeah. So this, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, is our chicken couscous from Tunisia which wraps up night one of country number 177, Tunisia, uh, as we work our way from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Uh, specialized in Middle Eastern food, that's Greek, Turkish, and Cypriot. Oh, the ooh, really good stuff. Uh, Cyp Cypriot and Greek food were two of the best things they did so far. Turkish is coming next week. But this is night one of Tunisia. Um... Uh, night two, mm, probably, maybe tomorrow night. Uh, night three, definitely Tuesday. Uh, Tunisia, country 177. Follow here on Meerkat. Follow on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on YouTube, and go to cliffyland.com to see the blogs every Wednesday that has pictures, links to the original recipes, links to these videos, information about the countries, uh, stuff about the, how it all went. And uh, so you can check out the countries you missed. You can go back and see everything from Afghanistan to uh, last week, which was Tonga. This week is Tunisia. So night one, wrapped up. Night two, coming up, maybe tomorrow. Definitely Tuesday. So that'll be two or three. Check that out. Thank you again. Gotta eat. It's getting cold. It's late. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.